Now turn to section 2. Section 2. You will hear an extract from a radio programme called Consumer's Choice, which gives advice to consumers on how to make complaints. First, you will have some time to look at questions 11 to 20. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Hello everyone. Welcome again to Consumer's Choice, which is the last in our present series. Isn't that right, Wendy? Yes, that's right. But we'll be back again after summer break with a new series. We'll tell you more about that later. But first, in today's programme, we start off with the missing photographs. We'll tell you a story of Miss Patty Ching, one of our listeners. We'll tell you how she has qualified for our Consumer of the Month award with her determination. Dennis? Thank you, Wendy. Well, Miss Patty Ching went on a holiday to Europe last month. This was her first ever trip abroad and one for which she'd been saving for 10 years. Her tour took her around 12 countries in 21 days, and being a keen photographer, she took lots of photographs. Ten rolls of film, to be exact. About 360 photographs. When Patty got back home, she gave all her photos to top-class photo services for developing, and they vanished. She never saw them again. Of course, she was furious with the company and complained. They apologised and offered her compensation. Ten free rolls of film. This made her even more angry, and she rejected this completely inadequate offer and asked for $2,000. The company refused her request, so Patty wrote them a letter telling them to pay up in ten days or she would take them to court. She received no reply. So, she did take them to court. But two days before the case was due to be heard, she received a cheque for $2,000. Top Class had obviously made their minds up on how the judge would decide. Patty's case provides a lesson to all of us. If we want our rights as consumers, we've got to fight for them. So for her determination and spirit, we name Patty our Consumer of the Month. Now you will have another chance to look at questions 16 to 20. As the conversation continues, answer questions 16 to 20. Thank you, Dennis. And now, I'd like to deal with the problem that many of our listeners write about. Sale prices. When we go to a sale and see a sign on something saying 50% off or $300 reduced to 100 how do we know the prices really have been reduced? One of our listeners, Mr Alvin Locke, tells his story. In a department store where I sometimes shopped, I saw a leather belt priced at $100. Too expensive for me, but I liked it and thought I might buy it next time the store had a sale. The store did have a sale, and I went back to look for the belt. It was there all right, but the ticket on it now read $200 reduced to 150 The sale price was actually higher than the normal price. What can we as consumers do in a case like this? The answer to Alvin's question is that, at the moment, all we can do is to complain to the store's management and bring these cases to the attention of the public. Bad publicity might help to put a stop to this dishonest practice. Of course, making a fuss about faulty goods or bad service is never easy. Most people dislike making a fuss. 
But if something you have bought is faulty or does not do what was claimed for it, you are not asking for a favour to get it right. It is the shopkeeper's responsibility to take the complaint seriously and to replace or repair a faulty article or put right poor service because he is the person with whom you have entered into an agreement. The manufacturer may have a part to play, but that comes later. So it's quite proper and reasonable to make a complaint about faulty goods or bad service. Well, Wendy, what do you think is the right way to do that? Well, the most important thing about making complaints, I think, is that they should be made to a responsible person in authority. Go back to the shop where you bought the goods, taking with you any receipt you may have. Ask to see the shop assistant in a large store. In a small store, the assistant may also be the owner, or you can complain directly. In a chain store, ask to see the manager. If you telephone, ask the name of the person who handles your inquiry, otherwise you may never find out who dealt with the complaint later. Even the bravest person finds it difficult to stand up in a group of people to complain. So, if you do not want to do it in person, write a letter. Stick to the facts and keep a copy of what you write. At this stage, you should give any receipt numbers, but you should not need to give receipts or other papers to prove you bought the article. If you are not satisfied with the answer you get, or if you do not get a reply, Write to the managing director of the firm, shop or organisation. Be sure to keep copies of your own letters and any you receive. Well, thank you for your good advice. It's nice for every consumer to take an action when he or she gets bad goods or service. And of course, the consumer's choice will continue to press for the government to bring in laws similar to those in other countries to protect consumers by making it illegal to cheat them in this way. And now I'd like to tell you about our new consumer hotline which came into operation last month. So far we have received... That is the end of section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers.